This video is going to be regarding oogenesis, which is the development of the egg. So before we begin, let's start with the some characteristics about the egg. Now let's say we had an egg. Now the egg has this a layer called the vitellin envelope that's just surrounding the outside. And it has a very, very thick jelly layer on the outside. It's rather large, as you can see. And I will go over their function very, very shortly. It also has something called cortical granules, which are which change to an appropriate color. Cortical granules, rather, you can barely see that, but they're gr grainous in shape, hence their name. It's sort of just on the inside of the plasma membrane, to the perimeter of the plasma membrane. Now let's go over their function. First off, this is the jelly layer. This here is the vitellin envelope. And this would be the plasma membrane. The jelly layer serves protective roles for the egg. It is also a basic protection against polyploidy. Now, so this is a basic or a general protection against polyploidy. Polyploidy is is the the fertilization with more than one sperm, which would cause genetic or not genetic, but birth defects essentially, which is not preferable, of course. Now, the vitellin envelope plays a more a more active role in preventing polyploidy. There are two main defenses the egg has against polyploidy. The first one is called the depolarization, and the next is called the slow block. So let's go over depolarization. It's very simple. Let's say we had an egg, and now let's say we had another sperm that was going to fertilize the egg. Let's say it made contact right there. Now right at the point of contact, there would be this sudden rush of this release of calcium inside the egg that would change the cell's electronegativity which would cause the sperm to be less attracted towards the egg which would work in that favor because the egg is already fertilized the it would, the release of calcium begins at the point of contact and then eventually eventually it goes it starts heading in that direction and it keeps going until it actually covers the entirety of the egg until the egg is depolarized this decreases the quantity the mass quantity of sperm that go towards the egg, so it, it does serve a rather important role in preventing polyploidy. Now let's go over the, the slow block. This occurs just after the, poly, the depolarization. Let me just get, get rid of all of this here. I'm also going to move this just over to the side because it's kind of in my way. Let's say this was the plasma membrane. Now shortly after fertilization of the egg, the cortical granules, these things here just inside of this, just inside of the egg, just inside of the plasma membrane, these cortical granules release calcium and they release it towards the outside, towards in between the plasma membrane and the vitellin envelope. See, the, pla the vitellin envelope is just outside the plasma membrane, so the calcium would kind of get, it would get stuck in between there. And thus, let's say this was the vitellin envelope, and notice that it's slowly getting larger. It's getting larger because all of the all of the calcium pretend this red stuff is calcium it's causing osmolarity to increase it's causing the the water from the outside to go inside which is pushing the vitellin envelope outside because there's going to be more water occurring inside of here now eventually this is actually going to increase rather large up to around here this slow block is a very powerful defense mechanism against polyploidy it's essentially almost impossible for any egg or any sperm to actually get by this vitellin envelope because it's, it's so thick and it is very difficult for the sperm to enzymatically dig its way through this here because it's for one the depolarization of the egg is causing most sperm to just turn around they don't even want to go towards the egg and two it's incredibly thick it's far more thick and it's made of a different composition than the jelly layer. So these are two defense mechanisms against polyploidy that the egg has during fertilization. So now let's go over the actual development of the egg. I have here a diagram of oogenesis, the development of, of a general egg. Now first it begins with an oogonium, which is essentially one of the very beginning cells. This cell here first undergoes a DNA replication or essentially it's also titled differentiation of the egg so it differentiates from one of the beginning cells into now a primary oocyte this one is going to now because it differentiated it's going to continue to go through all of these stages here until it becomes a full-blown egg now this occurs in meiosis one now after becoming a primary oocyte it then undergoes the first part of meiosis two to become a secondary oocyte so it produces a secondary oocyte and a polar body 
Now the polar bodies in most, most mammals, sometimes it actually undergoes apoptosis, which is programmed cellular death, which means it, it's essentially a suicide cell, it just destroys itself, or it can actually consume itself or have macrophages or something of that sort, or of that nature, consume it, the cell itself because it serves no purpose. Now it's, it should be noted that polar bodies in, others, in, uh, in some mammals, in some organisms, they actually do serve a purpose. But we won't be going over that in particular right now. So for our purposes, we're going to say the polar bodies degenerate and serve no, no, no significant purpose in oogenesis. So we can think of polar bodies as being the byproducts, just garbage that is produced during the development of the egg. So after reaching, secondary, after reaching the first part of meiosis 2 and becoming a secondary oocyte, if you notice this one right here, these, this one lineage of the egg, this one is going to become the, the actual full-blown mature egg right here. Everything else is just going to be garbage that disappears. Now as I was going to say, once it reaches the secondary oocyte stage, it's actually going to stay here, it's going to be stopped, halted, until this, this one egg right here is fertilized. Now after it gets fertilized, only then does it continue to produce, other, produce another full-blown mature egg it's going to become a zygote and develop into the organism that it's that it's of, that the egg is from. This is also going to produce another polar body, which is going to just degenerate for our purposes. And this polar body over here is actually going to go undergo it again. But we could just ignore that. It's pretty much just garbage destroying itself at this point. So that is essentially the basic development process of an egg. It produces a lot of garbage here, and it stops at meiosis here, the, the initial point of meiosis too, and waits until it gets fertilized. After fertilization occurs, it matures into a full-blown egg, a zygote, at which it later develops into the, the actual organism. So let's go over some types of eggs that we can actually have. And these are the three main egg types. First we have mesolysophil, telolysophil, second, and isolysophil. Now the main differences, the distinguishing point between these types of eggs are the quantity and the sort of the position of the yolk. Notice in isolysophil, this one right here, the yolk is more generally evenly distributed all around the egg. While in, let's say, telolysophil eggs, the yolk is in a high abundance, yes, but it's it's polar, it's near some point on the egg, it's not evenly distributed. And notice that on mesolysophil eggs, these are the main distinguishing points between these three types of eggs. Now sea urchins, these, the, these spiky things, these spiky uh, sea dwelling creatures, those types of organisms have the isolysophil type of egg. Telolysophil belongs to the birds, reptiles, and some types of fish. The example here is zebrafish. And then we have mesolysophil eggs, the exinopus. The exinopus is just the, the name for some type of frog. Most types of frogs have mesolysophil eggs. Now the quantity of egg, or rather I should say the quantity of yolk in an egg, usually states something about the organism's development time. Or rather, generally, it just means that the, the egg, the organism rather, needs a longer de development time in order to become what it is. And these are the basic characteristics of the three types of eggs. Okay, well, this is all I'm going to be going over for today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them in a rather hasty manner. And have a nice day.